As we continue to change the profile of industrial electrical systems from linear loads to nonlinear loads, harmonics come into play. These electrical harmonics are changing the way we buy equipment, protect our automation, and even use our power systems in heavy industrial facilities. In this episode, we'll discuss the history of harmonics, what they are, and how to mitigate them. Welcome back to The Power Grid, a podcast that helps you build reliability in your electrical system and gives you confidence in your power. I'm Brian Brannigan with Power Protection Products. We've been solving power quality problems for almost 30 years. We're your trusted advisors for critical power, cooling, and energy solutions. Electrical harmonics have been creeping into our electrical systems for decades. As we convert linear loads to nonlinear loads, the rise of electrical harmonics continue to impact our electrical system. I remember going into an electrical room at a water treatment plant back in the late 90s. Yes, that's how long I've been doing this. There was an old gray transformer sitting by the door. This transformer was hot and noisy. It was actually humming and vibrating almost like a space heater. To make matters even worse, someone was using the top of it to warm up their lunch. That's how hot it was. And next to the lunch, someone was warming up their work gloves prior to going back outside in the cold. This was my first experience with electrical harmonics. That hot, noisy transformer was not overloaded with 60 hertz frequencies, but with harmonic frequencies. These are frequencies other than 60 hertz. You see, at that time, the industry was just starting to come to grips with this new strange thing called electrical harmonics. As an industry, we have come a long way since the 1990s in making changes to the electrical system to accommodate these harmonics. Electrical harmonics play a big role in how we use and waste power. It's important to know how these harmonics are impacting your electrical system and how to mitigate them. Choosing the right type and size of equipment is critical and usually takes a power quality study. These harmonics occur when equipment uses current in a non-linear fashion. Equipment that commonly does this would be things like your personal computer, various office equipment, copiers, printers, electronic and magnetic light ballasts, modern welders, variable frequency drives, and any device that uses a switch mode power supply. Some of the problems you're going to see with harmonics is overheating and failure of things like transformers, computers, motors, lights, and ballasts, switch gear, and even motor control centers. Equipment that uses power in a linear fashion is typically the older equipment, like an incandescent light bulb or a space heater or just a regular motor. Those use it in linear fashion, and that's typically how our electrical system was designed for that type of equipment. But when you put in nonlinear equipment that uses power in a non-sinusoidal waveform, you're going to start to generate harmonics because nonlinear equipment has a habit of gulping the current supply. Instead of a smooth sine wave, you have a bumpy sine wave. So it's this combination of linear and nonlinear power in the electrical system that's going to cause the problems when we're building this magnetic field and trying to build and use the magnetic field in a linear format. So equipment that you might typically see used in a nonlinear fashion, things like the computers, the modern light ballasts, the copiers, even variable frequency drives. All equipment that uses an AC to DC power supply will be using electricity in a nonlinear fashion. And typically, we generate harmonic frequencies. 60 hertz is the fundamental frequency for a sine wave, but when you start to use equipment with nonlinear power supplies, 
you take three times 60, you'll get 180 hertz or the third harmonic, or maybe even five times 60, and you'll get 300 hertz or the fifth harmonic. So the third, fifth, and seventh harmonic are quite dominant in electrical environments that use nonlinear loads. If we had a normal balanced three-phase system, you could freeze time at any point along the three phases, and you would still get to a balance of zero amps. But it's when you have these nonlinear loads that's gulping the current, and you freeze time at any one given spot on the sine wave, and you're going to have some math that looks a little different, and you could gener easily generate up to 50 amps of harmonic frequency. Typically, we see the fifth, the seventh harmonic profile in 480 volt systems. And we'll see the third harmonic in 120-208 volt systems. I'll give you a couple of examples of what you could expect for harmonics. If you have something in your electrical system that might have a six pulse rectifier, you're going to see the fifth and the seventh harmonics as the dominant harmonics. And then when you go into a 12 pulse rectifier, you're going to see something like the 11th and 13th harmonic, or even an 18th pulse drive, you're going to see 17th harmonic, 19th harmonic. Switch mode power supplies, which we see the most common, is the 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th harmonic. And so it's very important to understand that the equipment you put in your electrical system is going to generate an unusual harmonic profile based on the pulsing of that equipment. Now IEEE 519 has a standard for current distortion, and this typical standard is around 8 to 12% of total harmonic distortion. When it comes to voltage, it's pretty commonly known that anything above a 5% harmonic distortion for voltage is considered uh, unusual and probably needs to be addressed, according to the IEEE 519. So, Harmonic currents travel throughout your power system. Since they're not at 60 hertz, they can damage capacitors and transformers that are designed to operate only at 60 hertz. Harmonics can cause damage and unexpected shutdown of computers, variable frequency drives, UPS systems, lighting systems, and other electronic equipment. When these magnetic lines of force cut through the wire and they induce current flow, the current flow internal to the wire is called an eddy current. The higher frequency currents caused by the harmonics running through the transformer core and the coils cause eddy currents to flow more readily in each of the core of the coil and coil the winding conductors. These eddy currents cause excessive heat to build up in the transformer leading to damage and limiting the life of the transformer. Back in the 90s, we actually came up with a new standard for transformers that have switch mode power supplies. We would derate the transformer by 50% when there was more than 70% of the load coming onto the transformer from power supplies. So that was our first step in mitigating harmonics was to derate the transformer or the opposite of that, make the transformer bigger we would start to increase the K rating or the insulation rating of the transformer to count for these harmonics. A typical source for harmonic would be a variable frequency drive. And we know by putting meters on this sort of equipment that it's not unusual to see 36% of harmonic distortion on the fifth harmonic in a typical variable frequency drive. On any kind of a power supply, a, that's a switch mode power supply, something that might be on your computer or something on some programmable logic controller. It's not unusual to see 39% of harmonic distortion on the third harmonic and maybe even 30% of harmonic distortion on the fifth harmonic. So this is the damage that's caused to your electrical system by these switch mode power supplies. The lifespan of the motor will be shortened by half if the overheating is increased by eight degrees Celsius. If a capacitor exists in the power system and harmonic producing loads are used, you also need to check for harmonic resonance because it could end up in that capacitor and cause premature failure of the capacitor. 
Detecting harmonics in your electrical system is going to require the use of a good power quality meter. You're going to want to run this meter over a time to make sure that all the equipment is functioning and working operating at capacity to get the correct measurement for the harmonic profiles. The old way of solving harmonic problems was to size the equipment to withstand the large harmonic neutral currents by using oversized K-rated transformers, oversized neutrals and switchboards, panel boards, busways, and all the neutral wiring. In fact, our first response was to double the size of the neutral. Then we started to increase the size of the transformers. If you install active harmonic correction filters in your electrical system, you can filter out these harmonics and repair the distorted voltage. Even line reactors can have some impact on harmonic mitigation. Typically, we could see an 80% distortion on a line reactor, but on the output of the line reactor, we could actually see that get knocked down to 38% distortion. So that's a good start for mitigating harmonics, but it's nothing compared to the job that a harmonic conditioning unit can do. So in order to take care of the harmonics in your electrical system, and build the confidence that you need, we need to condition the power for the equipment and the environment. Look for the nonlinear loads, the known source of the problem. Watch for hot spots in the electrical system, typically the transformers. Identify reoccurring electrical maintenance issues, circuit board failures. Pinpoint down issues in the electrical system like tripped breakers, drives, etc. Maintain and document all electrical system components as according to NFPA 70B. Develop a power quality improvement plan. Engage P3 to help identify and solve harmonic problems and other power quality issues. Installing harmonic mitigation equipment is commonplace in today's electrical environment. This equipment comes in a variety of shapes and sizes. It's important to do the power quality monitoring and make recommendations on your specific needs based on the type and size of harmonic profile in your system. You need a trusted advisor to help you get there. If you want to understand the impacts harmonics are having on your electrical system, reach out to us at P3 so we can help you measure and determine the amount of harmonics in your system. The link is in the show notes.